Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of diabetes risk. Um, so we have different patients, and we have their age, their gender, and then a bunch of um, uh, symptoms, uh, either a yes or no for each symptom, and then at the end we have a positive or negative class, uh, where positive means they're at risk for diabetes. So we're going to try to predict um, whether a given patient is at risk based on a bunch of symptoms. So let's hop into the notebook. Um, I'm going to be using NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. Uh, then for pre-processing, I'm going to use the train test split function from sklearn and the standard scalar also from sklearn. Uh, and then for our models, we'll train a bunch of models and see which one performs the best. Uh, so we have logistic regression, k nearest neighbors, uh, decision tree, a support vector machine with a linear kernel, support vector machine with a nonlinear kernel, and then a neural network and our two uh, ensemble methods, random forest and gradient boosting. So let's go ahead and import those, uh, and I'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. And we get the file path for the CSV file up here. I'll click copy file path, and I'm going to paste it in right there. And we can take a look. All right, so here's the data set as we saw before. Um, and this is actually a quite uh, clean data set. Uh, if we take a look at data.info, uh, we can see there actually are no missing values here. We have 520, which is the total number of entries, non-null values in each column. Uh, we also have all, everything is encoded as objects, uh, except, except for the age, which is an integer. Everything else will need to uh, encode in some way to be able to feed into the model in a numeric form. So let's start pre-processing. <coughs> so there's not too much we have to do here. No filling of missing values. Pretty much the only thing we have to do is encode all of the data into numeric form and then scale the data uh, in some way to improve the performance of many of the models. Um, <coughs> now I see there's no and yes uh, in male and female but I just want to be sure that there's only two values in each of these columns. So what I'm going to do is create a dictionary that's going to map the column name to the length of unique values in the column. So we take uh, data sub column dot unique to get all the unique values and then we take the length to see how many we have. And that's going to be for every column in data dot columns. Uh, now we can see how many values we have in each one, and it does look like we have two in every column except for age. Um, so I'm not going to encode the class column because that is what we're trying to predict, and sklearn allows for text labels, so we'll leave them in the way they are. Um, but for all the the, the um, for all of the symptom columns, uh, we can pretty much guarantee that they all have either a no or a yes for any example. Um, because we know the gender column also has two values, we know that there's only male or female. So this is essentially what we have to do. We just have to pick, uh, for each column, we pick a value, either male or female, or no or yes, one of them, and then send that to one, and send the other value to zero. This is called binary encoding. Uh, and when you have only two values in a categorical column, uh, it's fine to just turn the column into a uh, column of zeros and ones, where one is any of the two values, it's up to you. Um, so let's create a function called preprocess inputs. And this function is going to take in a data frame and make a copy of it. And right now, all it's going to do is return the data frame. And so if we, let's call the process version of data uh, x, then x equals preprocess inputs of data. And if we look at x, uh, right now it's just a copy, but now we can do our uh, our pre-processing steps in this function and see the result down here. So there's really only two steps here. One, uh, encode the male and female as one and zero. And two, encode all the others, uh, encode the yeses and noes as one and zero. Um, okay, so Let's do the first one first. Let's work with the gender column. We'll say binary encode gender column. So uh, there's a few ways you could do this. One way is you could apply a function uh, that takes in a value you want to encode as one, 
um, and send all the others to zero. Another way is to use a dictionary. That's what we're going to use. Uh, so pandas has a uh, you can call a um, the dot the replace function on a column, uh, like so. If we take the gender column and call dot replace, we can actually pass in a dictionary to the replace function that specifies the mapping we want. So we can send female to zero and male to one. And when we call this, it'll actually just do the replacements for every single example in gender. So let's make that the new column and just get, uh, verify that that works. You can see the males have gone to one, the females have gone to zero. Uh, now these values are, are pretty much arbitrary. Uh, we could switch them, absolutely. It doesn't really matter. Mm. Uh, but as long as you pick one, you send the other to one to zero. All right, and then we'll binary encode the symptom columns. So instead of typing them all out, because there's quite a few of them, uh, we can just take df dot columns uh, and drop all the rest. So we'll drop age, gender, and class. And this will be a list of all of the symptom columns. And we'll say for each column in that list, uh, we'll do the same thing we did up here, but for an arbitrary df sub column. Now here, since we know the uh, values are always yes and no, we can just send no to zero and yes to one. All right, and um, all right, uh, so that's pretty much it for encoding. If we run this, everything is in numeric form. Uh, except for the class, but like I said, sklearn allows class labels to be text. So the next thing to do, and the last thing to do, is to scale the data. So by scale, all I mean is uh, I want all of the variables to take on the same range of values. And already we know that many of them do. Uh, everything except the age column takes on a range between 0 and 1. However, the age is um, on a different scale. So there's a few ways we can go about this. Um, one way is to min-max scale, uh, which would just apply to age what we've already have in gender. It'll take the maximum value uh, and send it to one, and the minimum value and send it to zero, and sort of squish all the data down into that range between zero and one. Um, another way is standard scaling, which we standardize the column, uh, and I guess we'll do that today. Uh, I imported a standard scaler from sklearn uh, at the top, and standardization basically uh, just applies a shift and a scale to the column. Uh, so we can give it uh, a mean that we want and a variance that we want. And the most typical way to do this, um, the reason it's called standardization, is because we give it a mean of zero and a variance of one. So let's do that. We'll scale x, but before we scale x, we actually have to split the data frame up. So I'm going to split df into x and y, uh, where y is going to be what we're trying to predict. So that's the class column. And x is all the rest of the data. So we drop class and set, uh, drop it from axis 1, which is the column axis. Then we'll do our train test split. Uh, I imported this function train test split from sklearn at the top. That's going to take in what we want to split. Uh, we specify a train size, so how much of the data is going to the train set. Let's pick 70%. Uh, and we'll keep shuffle equals true on. Uh, this will shuffle the data before we perform the split. And then we'll have a random state, which uh, just guarantees that the shuffle is always done in the same way. Uh, so we can reproduce the results of this notebook. And this will return four new sets of the data, x train, x test, y train, and y test. Uh, and I want to return these four values instead of just df. So if I return this now, and we'll get them back over here, uh, we can see that xtrain is 70% of the original data and no longer contains the class column. The class column is just ytrain. And these indices do match up. Um, so now we scale. And I'm going to use a standard scalar, like I said. Scalar equals standard scalar. Um, 
and right like I said standard scalar will give each column a mean of 0 and a variance of 1 so we fit the scalar to just the train set x train only we don't scale y because we well we couldn't if we wanted to this is our text but we want to leave the target or label uh, values intact we only fit it to the train set because we sort of pretend that we don't have access to the test set when we're doing pre-processing. Uh, because in practice, if you were to deploy this model, uh, you, if you were to get new data that you wanted to make predictions on, you wouldn't have time to uh, bring it in and refit the scalar and refit the model. So we sort of, uh, sort of uh, pretend that the test set is uh, new data that we, haven't, we don't have access to at the time of pre-processing. So, uh, we can actually apply the transformation, which will apply to both xtrain and xtest using scalar.transform uh, on the data set. So down here is xtest instead of xtrain. Um, and scalar.transform, uh, if we return this, this will work, but it returns it as a numpy array. So we can't visualize it as nicely. So I'd like to go back up here and turn it back into a data frame with pandas.dataframe. Uh, and keeping the indexes indices as the same as they were before and the column names as the same as they were before. Uh, just going to change these to x test. All right, and now we'll return it. They should be it should be back in the data frame form. Uh, and you can see the data has been scaled. So if we look at x train dot describe, uh, you can see that the means are all very close to zero and the standard deviations are all very close to one. Um, all right, and why train is still just the, the class labels. So let's start training. We're ready to feed it into the model. Models, actually. So I'll create a dictionary of all the models we use. Um, and this will contain all of these. Um, it's going to map the name of the model to the actual instance of the model. And to save on time, I'll just copy this in. Uh, so let's just paste this in. Uh, we have the name of each model followed by the actual instance of the model. And that allows us to iterate through from name and model in models.items. Uh, so dot items returns the key value pairs of a dictionary as tuples so that we can iterate through two at a time like this. And then we'll fit each model one at a time, model.fit xtrain Y train, and we'll print out a little confirmation message that says the model was trained. All right, and you can see each one was trained uh, very quickly, but we only have 520 examples, so uh, it did go quickly. And we'll get the results for name and model in models.items. We'll print out the name of the model followed by the accuracy value that the model, uh, uh, the accuracy of the model on the test set. So we'll use model.score and pass in the test set. And dot .score will return an accuracy value as long as the model is a classification model. And all of these are classification models. Uh, and I'd like to uh, format it a little nicer. I'm going to format it to two decimal places and I'll display it as a percentage, the percent sign, and then dot .format with model.score, and I'm just going to multiply it by 100 since it is a percentage. All right, and here are the results. Uh, so we did pretty well all around the board. Um, our, our linear model, the logistic regression, um, did uh, is one of the, the worst ones. In fact, it looks like our linear models are not doing so well. We have the linear kernel support vector machine and the logistic regression have 92% each. Uh, our worst performance was the k-nearest-neighbors algorithm, which uh, was unable to uh, reach the level of the other models. Um, our radial basis function support vector machine uh, had a bit of a higher accuracy, uh, and our neural network a little higher than that. Uh, but the winners here are the decision tree, uh, the random forest, and the gradient boosting uh, classifiers. And so those are actually all tree-based models. Uh, the random forest and gradient boosting are tree-based ensemble models. Uh, the only real, uh, I mean, the main difference between them is that in random forest classification, um, the trees, the decision trees, are 
uh, created in parallel. And then at the end, uh, there's a majority vote classification across all the trees. And in the gradient boosting, uh, there is uh, the, the trees are built in series, one after the other. Uh, but it looks like our tree-based models uh, took the lead here. And uh, that will sum up today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.